Ah! Oh. Here's some news. News in the form of a question, which is the best kind of news. Hey, should cops have guns? Perhaps the answer is maybe not. More on this shocking discovery in a moment, this moment. Tonight, community leaders, loved ones, and the lawyer for a Tatiana Jefferson's family want justice. She went to investigate at the window. An officer was on the other side who shouted commands, and before she had a moment to respond, he shot her to death. That's murder. Speaking out, after police released body cam footage showing two officers responding to a welfare check, when one officer calls for someone to put up their hands. Put your hands up, show me your hands. Show me. The Fort Worth Police Department saying the officer perceived a threat. The officer drew his duty weapon and fired one shot, striking the person inside the residence. Woo boy, what a fun video you're about to watch. What a thick ray of sunshine on your brain. You're so welcome for this golden stream you're about to receive. Now, in case you don't remember because of time, Roughly one month ago, a Texas woman named Tatiana Jefferson was shot through her window while playing video games with her nephew in her home where she lived. In what is clearly a turn of events, unlike anything we've seen in this country for the past 400 years, the community was shocked to learn that her executioner was a police officer. Having failed to identify himself as a cop, Officer Aaron Dean later resigned before being arrested for murder, a thing he did. This comes at the heels of the murder conviction of Amber Geiger, a former Dallas police officer who, back in 2018, entered the apartment of Botham Jean, an unarmed black man, before shooting him dead. But that's, that's totally okay, you see, because Botham had weed on him the night he was murdered. You know, that, that, that thing no one but the bad guys have. Oh, how that seductive and totally uncommon jazz tea lures in the wicked. Sometimes, even driving 400 miles from Louisiana in order to purchase that very rare devil grass before shooting a man who just happened to also be the key witness for the trial of a police officer who shot said unarmed black man. Such a, a, a totally normal thing to happen to those insatiable reefer hounds. Let's hug. So, that's all pretty terrifying, and totally a thing we've all been talking about and upset about ever since it happened. Even the president spoke up against what happened, saying, all Republicans must remember what they are witnessing here, a lynching. At least I assume that's what he was talking about, I only skimmed the tweet, but like, I mean, <laughs> Imagine if he was talking about anything else, right? Like, how cartoonishly evil would that be? To use a word like lynching to describe his own political problems. Can you imagine? Can you imagine that in a country like this that has serious problems with unarmed black people being regularly executed by the police for a president to call himself the victim of a lynching? And like, like what if there was a conservative conference at one of his resorts with his son and former press secretary as guest speakers, and they played a video simulating him, the president of the United States, point blank executing the logo for Black Lives Matter? That would be that would that would be that would be surreally awful, right? Like like objectively a bad look that even his base wouldn't defend or deflect, unless they're like stupid or racist or liars, like, like a really terrible president that should be impeached and removed from office. Also, can you imagine if the president owned hotels and resorts and like made money from them and didn't understand how Halloween candy worked? Can you picture it? What a mess that would be for America. Anyway, cops is what this video is about. Specifically, cops who gun people down in their own homes and why that is happening. You know, besides the racism. Like all your high school history textbooks, we're gonna just push the racism to the side for a second. Because, at least as far as we know, neither officers Amber Geiger nor Aaron Dean wanted to go to jail for murder. Both shootings at least appear to not be premeditated. Otherwise, you'd assume that they wouldn't be so blatant about it. Like, like if a cop really wanted to kill someone, like a, a witness to a trial they were mad at, they could easily make it look like, I don't know, a, a, a drug deal gone wrong or something like that. I'm just spitballing, not talking about anyone specific. The point is, that it's safe to assume, despite their motives, these cops genuinely thought that they could at least get away with shooting an unarmed black person at the time that they did that. 
Something in their brains made them feel entitled to pull the trigger. In the case of Officer Dean, his two biggest mistakes seen in the body camera footage were that he failed to announce himself as a cop and then fired his weapon almost immediately after shouting a verbal command with obviously no intention to actually wait for a response. Like, don't watch the video if you don't think you can handle it. But if you do, notice that the murdering officer appears to be completely on autopilot. His command's clearly just a thing he was trained to shout before his body fired the gun. And that's what I'd like to explore today, police training. Starting with this quote from the Fort Worth police chief, Edwin Krause, regarding the shooting of Tatiana Jefferson. We're, we're trying to train our officers better, we're trying to shore up our policies, and we're trying to ensure that they act and react the way that the citizens intend them to. That they act and react with a servant's heart instead of a warrior's heart. Now, that might sound like well-chosen words by a department doing what should be considered the baseline apology to any of these shootings. But there's a key word there that stands out. Let's, let's see if we can spot it again in this next white guy video. In this new, dark, and desperate hour, God has blessed us with warriors. Wherever they come, whatever they do, the warriors will be ready. A warrior fights violence. And what do they fight it with? Violence. Violence is your tool. Violence is your enemy. Violence is the realm you live in and you must master it. Hey, what the f is that all about? Is it perhaps relevant to the subject of police violence? Would be pretty weird if it wasn't. Would be pretty weird if I just showed you a random video of a dude talking about unrelated stuff. Use your brains for Pete's sake. Sorry for lashing out. Folks, I want you to meet Lieutenant Colonel Dave Grossman, an aptly named police trainer who, for the last 20 years, has conducted training seminars in all 50 states for every federal law enforcement agency, and even gave lectures at West Point. Oh, also, he sure talks about Jesus a lot and seems to be completely f***ing unhinged. To live is Christ. Is there anything better than to live in Christ? It is the ultimate joy. To live is Christ, and to die is what? Is gain. To live is Christ, and to die is even better. What? It's a no-lose situation. If we live, we live in Christ. If we die, we gain. Do you understand? Our nation here on earth was bought with the blood of our warriors. And the kingdom in heaven was bought with the blood of Jesus. That man is training cops! Anywho, you notice that word again, warrior? It's not an uncommon word in the police lexicon, thanks to something called warrior training, a type of supplementary police education that gross man is known for conducting along with his business partner, Jim Glennon, a former police lieutenant in Chicago. Glennon co-owns a company called Caliber Press, which has a very popular seminar called The Bulletproof Warrior. Now, to be fair and balanced, the class has since been renamed to simply Bulletproof. And to be even more balanceder, it sure seems possible that this was because their most notable alumni is the guy who shot Philando Castile while he was in his car with his family. Hey, check out their snazzy promo for the class! Be sure to use the discount code to reduce the price from $209 an officer to only $189 an officer. Or just buy this stylish DVD box set for $300. And perhaps even you can become a warrior, like that guy I just mentioned who shot Philando Castile while he was in his car with his family. And some weed. If you're in the Fort Worth area, you can definitely catch one of these seminars, one of which was conducted there just last year. But hey, you know, Maybe I'm being too hard, mischaracterizing this training. So let's take a look at one of the leaked textbooks from the seminar, which characterizes a few pre-attack indicators from suspects as the acts of avoiding eye contact, yawning, or simply the word hands. So next time you're pulled over, you make sure not to be tired and also to avoid having hands. Also, try not to be a minority, seriously. That's that's sort of the big one. But in this particular copy of the textbook, the pupil was kind enough to note that the slide projector during the presentation simply had the words, 
don't hesitate on it. Also, there's a page where the entire text is just Bible quotes, mostly about murder. This is used to train cops. There are just so many questionable bits of advice in this thing. Not to mention that gross man likes to call his teaching killology. But possibly the most disturbing aspect has to be the overall warrior theme these seminars instill in the students. There's an ongoing theme in these lessons that police are a separate class of individuals, God directed, to inflict violence for a noble cause. There are many ways that this manifests in his speeches, like literally comparing officers to knights of olden times. And God has raised up warriors. Now let me define what I mean by warriors. When I talk about a warrior, we could talk about the Zulu warrior, the Apache warrior, many ways a noble model. But when I talk about warriors, the model I want you to take away from here are the knights of old. Have you ever asked yourself why the symbol of a cop, a firefighter, is a shield? Why is a firefighter, the cop, the symbol, a shield, a badge, a star, a little chunk of armor hung on the left side? Why is that your symbol? It is a direct, intentional, overt reference to the knights of old. Today, for the first time in centuries, there are warriors who wake up every morning and they don armor. Hey, don't touch random people, bro. But the knight analogy is probably the most tame. In one class, he told officers to literally find an overpass overlooking the city they serve and imagine a cape blowing in the wind. You know, like Batman, famous friend of police seen here kicking a man down a sewer before blowing him up. This idea of being a superhero then translates to why cops should win off duty and even on vacation should totally bring their guns everywhere they go and be prepared to stop the next 9-11 because nothing like constant paranoia to really round out a holiday. The cop from Toad Suck, Arkansas is authorized to carry in Los Angeles and Orange County and New York. And the cop from Orange County in New York is authorized to carry in toad suck, and the world's a better place for it. Huh? You pray there will be somebody there with the life-saving tools of their profession, their moment of greatest need. Huh? And we don't care where they come from. Good people can disagree on civilian carry, but can we all agree we got to trust cops with the life-saving tools of their profession? If you can't trust cops with guns, then fold up the flag and kiss America goodbye because it's over. We trust them on duty, we trust them off duty. The warrior watched 3,000 citizens die before your eyes in pain and agony and despair in a puff of ash in a cloud of smoke. And you know one person on that plane could have stopped it. And you yearn to be that person. Some of you say, yeah, Dave, you got my number. I wish I was on that plane. Well, good. They ain't coming to your plane. They're coming to your mall. They're coming to your theater. They're coming to your church. They're coming to your kid's school. And you need to be ready for them. You cops, that means you carry off duty. Weird how he says that cops yearn for these hero moments, you know? Like, it seems like he's training them to imagine a grand superhero victory where they get to take out the terrorists and everyone in the room claps. And by glorifying that, it makes them really want that thing to happen. And then he encourages them to constantly walk around, while armed, looking for that thing. It's, it sure is weird how he does that in a police training seminar. But even more distressing than all of that is something he and other trainers call the sheepdog mentality. But, but why should I explain what that is when we have a totally great teacher for that? An old Vietnam veteran, an old retired colonel, put it to me like this. He said, Dave, most of the people in our society are sheep. They're kind, decent, gentle, productive creatures who can only hurt each other by accident under extreme provocation. Then they're wolves. And the wolves will feed on the sheep without mercy. Are there wolves in the land? Are there people who would go into your child's school and kill every single child and take pleasure in doing it? Are there people who would harm you and your loved ones? Are there wolves in the land? Are there? Never forget it. 
the moment you try to pretend there are no wolves in the land. The moment you try to deny the existence of evil, you're in denial. And you're just another sheep. Well, and never forget, there are wolves in the land. And there are lambs who need protecting. And then the old boy said, there are sheepdogs. He said, I am a sheepdog. I am a predator too. You write it all down? There are only three kinds of people. Sheep, wolves, and sheepdogs. Nothing else! And if you don't think that's true and don't believe that some people are undeniably evil despite their mental health status or background, well then you're just another sheep. You f***ing sheep. And then there are the sheep dogs, here to protect the sheep. Even if the sheep are a little peeved because the sheep dog has this weird tendency to murder non-white sheep and then claim they were wolves often by accusing the sheep of smoking sheep weed, as if that justifies it. Like, really, really often. It's not the sheepdog's fault, of course, because the sheep, well, they resent the sheepdog. The sheep resent their sheepdogs. The sheep resent their sheepdogs. You go out to the meadow, you ask one of the sheep, you say, hey, what do you think of the sheepdog? You know what he'd tell you? He's a bad man. He's always racing through the streets, going, woo! And of course, by woo, he means shooting unarmed people in their homes and cars and stuff. This, of course, spins off into something called sheepdog training, which Gross Man is also a part of, and you can check out for only $99. So, just to recap, cops are warrior sheepdogs. The public are timid sheep who resent them, and wolves are evil people who need to be put down the moment they make a move. You don't want to get hurt? Don't challenge the sheepdogs. You'll get nipped, aka shot, in your own home. And again, this is being taught to cops all over the country. And it's bad. Bad enough for some cities to actually try to ban the training, to which the companies are fighting back by offering free classes. What few studies we have on warrior training makes it clear that it's the opposite of what police need to prepare for the real world. A world where, by the way, a very small percentage of police duties can actually be defined as crime fighting. It's a broken philosophy based on fantasy that attracts all the wrong kinds of people. And it's being taught to cops. And despite the efforts to stop warrior training, people like Dave Gross Mann are heavily embedded in our government. A system that seems designed to churn out shitty, impulsive hotheads. For starters, police don't really get that much official training, likely making them turn to other sources, you know, like the NRA, a totally swell group that not only trains cops, but perpetuates the idea that there's a war on cops in this country. As you probably already guessed, Gross Man has spoken at many NRA events, because of course he has. He's a known part of the culture and well-liked. Just ask the many comments on the YouTube video I've been playing of people who sure sound like cops praising his motivational speeches. Remember that meeting Trump had with a bunch of people from the video game industry to discuss shooting violence? Well, guess who was there? You don't have to guess. It was Dave. Dave Gross Man, who, in case you wanted to be super not surprised, believes that video games are the problem. Because of course Dave does, and of course he would have access to the President of the United States. Like, doesn't just everything about that make sense? Aren't you happy the guy who thinks cops are modern day superheroes for God is also advising the President on video games? Boy howdy, I haven't even mentioned William Lewinsky, executive director of the Force Science Institute, a consultant company that also offers five-day training courses for only $1,650 and boasts training for 10,000 students from 2,200 agencies around the world. And you know, it must be good because it, 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 it has science in the name. And according to their own website, they are dedicated to scientifically determining and fully understanding the actual physical and psychological dynamics of force encounters. Which would certainly explain why Lewinsky charges over $1,000 an hour to appear in court, right? Surely th th this is all on the level stuff, yeah? Yeah, th this man that I just brought up in my video about bad police training, except, oh, oh.
It says nope. Not only is there just no good science surrounding the effective use of force from police, but Lewinsky's science has been specifically flagged as invalid and unreliable by the Justice Department, which might have something to do with the fact that he doesn't peer review his work opting to publish it in police magazines rather than science journals. You know that $1,000 an hour court fee? Well, that might have something to do with the fact that old Bill has a reputation for ass-pulling scientific explanations in order to regularly help police departments defend officers involved in obvious acts of murder. When a Sonoma County Sheriff's deputy shot a 13-year-old boy with a toy gun, they called Bill. When a San Francisco subway cop shot a man in the back while he was on the ground and detained, they called Bill. When an officer in Oklahoma accidentally shot and killed a man before screaming, F your breath, at his dying body, they called Bill. For a thousand an hour, Bill would get on that stand and use vague science to explain away why the officer involved was totally in the right, no matter what the circumstance. Because nothing says credible and scientific like always arguing the same conclusion no matter what the variables are. Billiam often uses the psychological condition of inattentional blindness to explain why cops might have gaps and lapses in their reports that he himself has admitted is indistinguishable from lying. For example, back in 2003 when a Hartford cop shot a man twice before claiming it was self-defense, before having that claim proven totally false by video taken during the shooting, Bill Lewinsky was able to use his pseudoscience to convince a jury to let him off. Since then, the officer got his job back and was awarded half a million dollars Thanks, Bill. You, you dickhead. Who, by the way, is banned from giving testimony in British Columbia because of everything you just learned. But here in the States, Bill is training cops. He's training cops. Guys, he's training cops. So yeah. If you're wondering why a cop feels totally justified to shoot a black woman in her own home, this is it. This is the reason. Besides the racism, right? we, we can't forget the racism. And it's not just one or two people, but a, a network, a culture embedded in our law enforcement, all designed to train cops to act like impulsive and entitled maniacs before getting a high-powered bullshit consultant to justify your actions after the fact. The problem is painfully obvious. Again, besides the racism, which is actually also pretty obvious. But if you need some kind of hope to desperately grip onto, like a life jacket on a Titanic, well, there's a small push for change here. As I already mentioned, this mentality is legally biting cities on the ass and causing them to change their training methods. And then there's FBI LIDA, an organization devoted to retraining cops to consider themselves servants rather than warriors. Sometimes a warrior mindset can allow you to be an us and them mindset. That's the last thing that we need from our police. Personally, I've lived that mindset. I understand it. And particularly being a police chief for a number of years, well, a guardian is a protector of the community. A guardian is a person that sees the cause of policing, not just the action of policing. A guardian is someone who looks out for the community, is a partner with the community, not separate from them. The old adage back in the 1990s when we would do a community, community policing was that the folks we worked with, the folks in our communities were our customers. Well, that's not really true. The folks in our communities are our partners. We must expand our mindset from that of a warrior to be inclusive of that also of a guardian. That's Dean Crisp, a 30-year law enforcement veteran whose name sounds like a lettuce mascot and who happens to be one of the FBI LIDA instructors. Are they perfect? I don't know, man. But he sure as shit isn't talking about how God ordained him to pull out his gun at a mall, you know? At one point in his TED talk, he specifically calls out a time he got unreasonably suspicious of a guy at a Walmart before realizing he was a good guy. 
and how he wouldn't have realized that had he jumped into a bullshit warrior mindset. So yeah, be like Mr. Crisp, the Crisp Daddy as we call him. Again, not much, but a start. Like, the bar is depressingly low here. Because if we really want to change the system, to avoid having cops skulking around houses, holding guns, and humming the lethal weapon theme, well, we have to fundamentally change how they are trained in a way that attracts a totally different kind of personality to the job. It can't just be additional courses. The entire philosophy and culture needs to be uprooted. And maybe they shouldn't have guns? You know, it's just a thought. Otherwise, we might as well give up and convert to a Judge Dredd system. No, not that one. The good one. Yeah! That's the one. That's the good Judge Dredd movie. If you haven't seen a Judge Dredd movie, that's definitely the one you'll want to watch. The Stallone one. Not the other one. And we're done. Hey, thanks for watching. You're, uh, you're a sheep, I'm a sheepdog. Pew, pew. I don't know. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Go to our patreon.com slash some more news if you want to support us. We've got a podcast called Even More News. We've got like merch and shit. And uh, you, 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 you great. Ah.